someone did post that they wanted us to have an episode where we talk about procrastination. Oh, I think so, I saw that on your latest story, right? Or latest reel. Latest reel. Well, yeah, I only do reels, man. Right. I don't mess around with stories anymore. I'm fucking purely reels. This reel came up and said to me, recommended for by recommended to Facebook. I was like, wow, sick. I'm recommended on Facebook. Mm. I <laughs> I don't know if you guys read some of the comments, but I kept commenting back because these people put LOL or happy. I'm like, can we start a meaningful conversation about <laughs> your comment? Because that. <laughs> that's what in my every time I open up my Instagram, the first thing that comes up is this little highlighted box from Meta that says, learn how to start meaningful conversations. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to start some meaningful. Like, why do you, they want people to talk back and forth on there. But if it's me doing it, it doesn't count. But if you two guys logged on to, we should try that. One of us should post something. And then the other two just have an inane conversation about nothing that's more than 50 characters every time and watch how fucking viral it goes. I bet. Because two people are having a conversation about it. Hmm. That's like that uh, that pave tool chain oh, hedging. God. The amount of conversations that that sparked and it went it must have got them millions of views i don't think so no we can let's see how many views the, did it get the amount of conversations that you had with sam by himself <laughs> no i must have exploded it Ex explode uh what the fuck is that account called pave tool pave you, tool. you can see how many views somebody else got yeah as long as you go on to their reels. So wow. if you hit the, the reels button. I got 23,000. Oh, that's it. Really? Yeah. And their average is 2,000 to 5,000. They have some, whoever these guys are, they have some, they have some high numbers on some things. I don't know who these people are, but they have some decent numbers. I don't even understand what their symbol is. Like, if you go to their, can you tell me what that symbol is? It doesn't seem I, like I know it. what it is. You know it, what it is? Yeah, it's it's a uh, like a paver a handle thing. So, why like would the, that be your symbol? It was like their first tool that they made way back when. Oh. How long ago was that? I actually don't know. They have a Unilift. They have their own, yeah, or I don't what other branded thing. It's not the Unilift, but there's another one like that. It looks a lot like a Unilift. Yeah. But I'm sure Unilift is just um, like the same thing, just branded these as guys Unilift. Had a, these guys were at H&A. Oh, yeah. Their H and A video got three thousand views. Obviously, they didn't have enough chains in that video. <laughs> the more chains, I was thinking about. You know, we need to have more of these really scientific tests. Oh, there's Chad just posted something on here. I did. When? Right Sydney, now? Sydney Must've Street Retaining Wall coming yeah. at you shortly. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Um, We're building a wall. So the guy wanted to talk us to talk about procrastination. Do you think okay. that now that we're probably into the our least what's it called? I don't our worst remember. hour? Our worst hour that this is a time to talk about procrastination. I feel like that post act like that was a random post I made. I feel like it hit home. <laughs> I feel like people wanted to live that or something. It's so weird because when I made it, I was like, ah, I think this is funny, but no one else will. <laughs> but then it, that hits made, home. Well, there's 80 comments on it, but 40 of them are me trying to spark meaningful conversation. <laughs> so you gotta take that into account. 
I don't know. Do you guys procrastinate a lot of? Sh I, someone had tagged me in this other procrastination video today, saying that procrastination is an emotional response to is procrastination is you not wanting to have an emotional response to the task at hand, and the theory being that I don't like working in the office because it it does it it makes me feel uncomfortable and I have a lot of anxiety because I think I suck at it and I'm not good at it, so that's why I don't do it. I feel like that was actually pretty accurate. I, I, I'll, I'll procrastinate on jobs I don't want to do or that the client is driving me nuts about. But is that because of an emotional response? I suppose. I guess so, right? Like I'm like you don't want to feel upset at the client or mad at the client, so you just eliminate the client from doing like eliminate. No. I'm spiteful. <laughs> I'll uh well, I'll hold off on doing their job. That's a like, spiteful yeah. response. Yeah, that's a spiteful response. If we're talking about, yeah. like, <laughs> do you feel incompetent at the task? No, never. And that never. makes you, I'm glad you have so much confidence, Chad. <laughs> I, exactly. I don't, I can, I think, I wouldn't take the job unless I knew I could do it. But I'll drag my feet getting there if you've, done something that i don't like or we don't communicate well, well that's that's not procrastination or... procrastination is i should be doing a quote in the office but instead i'm posting about the wall that i'm building on instagram oh. i know uh... what i should be doing but i'm not doing it and they're saying the reason you do that is because you have negative feelings about yourself when you're performing the task you're procrastinating that's not I why know. I procrastinate. Why if do I don't like if I don't like the task, I'll, I'll procrastinate. Like, well, why don't you like it? Because you're not good at it. Because it doesn't make you feel good about yourself. No, it's Find because it rewarding? I'm I, like, for example, I I this season and last season and probably the season before this, I procrastinated on quotes as soon as my schedule filled up. So like. If I had to put a quote together, I'd procrastinate on it because I know that already my schedule is so much full that my time is better spent elsewhere as opposed to working on this quote. But is that, it, is that, that isn't for like a year down the road. But is that procrastination or is that time assignment? Procrastination is when you know you have to do something and you choose not to do it. Well, I know saying, I need if you're to saying, do that. Because you don't need otherwise, to, because your schedule is full. No, but I, I know I need to do it because otherwise the client's going to get pissed off or the potential client's going to get pissed off, right? That I didn't communicate properly. So, like, in my mind, I know I need to do it. But, you, yeah, I guess you could make the argument that my schedule is full, that, like, I don't necessarily need to do it, but to keep my reputation, I should do it. Do you think your reputation would be better served if when you those people call you said my schedule is full and I'm not interested in your job rather than taking then going there looking at the job never pricing it never doing anything with it procrastinating it and pissing them off do you think it would have been better for you to just cut the whole fucking thing short and say listen I'm, yeah. I have no interest in coming to your house sorry yeah absolutely why don't you do that I would say there's probably because I do the same thing as you. I'm not throwing rocks. No, no, in my no. Glass. I'm was... trying to think because because I like I probably have two projects per season that I do that that everything seems fine on the phone. I go to meet them and then I don't click with the client or something just seems off, and then I I get home and I'm like trying to justify in my mind trying to spend the time to put this quote together because maybe it's an okay client maybe it's just the way they were i don't know in my mind i'm trying to justify it but that leads to me just like pushing it off not doing it and eventually the client messages me or emails me and says hey is that quote coming and i say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it, it'll be there eventually and then i just continue that procrastination cycle when do you actually sit down and do the quote? Or do you wait till the client hasn't contacted you anymore and has moved on? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I wish I could say that I am good at saying, 
hey, we're not going to make a quote for you or anything like that. I probably push it off till as long as I can. And then eventually I sit down, I, I get a quote together and I send it off to them. And it's usually uh, actually 100% of the time they don't go ahead with the quote in those situations. So my time is better spent at the beginning of that cycle when I meet with them and then afterwards say, hey, I don't think we're a good fit. We should probably, uh, you should probably find a different contractor. But I know that and I still like one to two times a season do this. It makes it worse for me the longer it goes because now I'm thinking to myself, these people haven't called another contractor because they're yes. waiting for my quote. And I don't want to quote your job, but they're waiting for it. And it makes me feel worse about the situation. And then my emotional response is I should procrastinate this because I already feel horrible about myself and horrible about my behavior and how I've treated these people for no reason. Because I should have just told them I have no interest in your fucking. Commercial is easier because a, a fax comes through. You look uh, at it. Fax. You don't want the job. You fax. crumple it up and throw it away. A fax. You're okay, right. an email, but an email comes if someone if a general contractor emails you about a bio retention cell yep. and you look at it and go yeah i'm not interested in bio retention cells delete that's the end of it yeah Correct. unless they call you and they're like man we just need you to give a price bro we just gotta have some idea so we can carry it in our number and then you give them this like price you basically made up and then they get the job and be like yeah you got that bio retention cell right i didn't fucking actually, look at that what the fuck actually, are you talking about some fucking gc called me last week and i was in the middle of raking or something like that and he says oh i'm doing prelims on this school job He's like, I just need a price for topsoil and sod. So I gave him my price. He's like, that seems really high. I said, well, then don't use it. He's like, well, no, I will, but it seems high. What the fuck do you want me to tell you? I just gave you my price out of nowhere. Like, I don't know you from fucking Adam. And I just gave you, you could be my competition for all I know. And I just straight up gave you the price. And he's like. Because I was busy raking. As I was busy raking, like it was a lapse in my own judgment, right? Like, like, and now you're going to tell me that it's too high. Fuck you. I don't have time to deal with your $300,000 job. Yeah. I'm breaking up this clump of dirt. <laughs> no, they're a shitty GC anyway, but I carried your number. Did you? I did. That's uh, I carried your number. That's consulting, but, uh, I know did Chad you, so did some, Chad did some coaching over text. Dang. What do you think the value of that is? Yeah. I, was price, I was pricing. I was pricing a uh, spreading topsoil job, yeah. which I haven't done a shit ton of and <laughs> lately. Well, I haven't done it in like I haven't priced that stuff in a while. Yeah. So I was pricing it, and then it occurred to me. I was like, I know who spreads soil all I the know time. Who spreads soil all the time, <laughs> every but, fucking day. But, I'll know who I'll call. <laughs> It, like, I'll call my coach. <laughs> <laughs> I once I thought about opening a consulting business or like a side gig consulting, but for landscaping, yeah. Well, or that's hair. all I know. All I know how to do. You know, hair cutting. I do, but true. I'm much more well versed in landscaping. I have more credentials. Do you think there's any transferable skills between the two? Absolutely, absolutely. What's um, a transferable skills. So, you know, whenever you're checking you check your grade one way and then you flip the level and you check it the other way right you do the same thing with haircuts really? you check it one way and then you check it the other way to make sure everything's it's square and maybe not level but like square and plumb and all this shit it's all the same no matter really? yeah whether you're a carpenter or you're a landscaper or you're a haircutter or whatever it's all the same i love the transferable skills yeah yeah it's a. Uh... I had a in that commercial so there was a parking lot i was pricing and when i met the guy he was said get rid of all the weeds in between these parking bumpers and i was like oh okay so i looked at it and it was like yeah it's probably like six or seven loads in my technical way of quoting this and then when he sent the scopes to quote it said get rid of all contaminated gravel 
but the parking uh, lot's like 140,000 square feet. So I'm like, wow. Well, how much of the gravel? How thick wow. do you think it's contaminated? Are we only talking about the six loads in the weed area? Because <laughs> the difference was to take three inches off the whole parking lot was 65 loads of material to haul in. To wow. only delete the weeds was six loads. So <laughs> the mm. difference was like 30 grand. I was like, yeah. well, I'm going with the high number because I am not eating shit yeah. on the parking lot. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> um, the way to do you it. You call and tell me I'm way out to lunch, then we can. I sent it in the email back because it's like a private tender thing. It's, hey, man, <laughs> this isn't a very specific item <laughs> for 140,000 <laughs> square feet. I need something. You know what my favorite thing about that tender was? And it's so commercial. It's so commercial. <laughs> it's No, it's so typical of commercial contracting. We need an eco OptiLock paver install so that it's a permeable paver. And so I said, yeah, so you need to do like an outlet pipe and a fucking bed of clear stone and a the geotextile. And the guy's like, no, no, just put it on Crusher Run with some HPB. And that's and that happens constantly with yeah. We'll figure it out after commercial. we get it. We'll, yeah. And then once you do it, they're like, hey, this isn't working. Well, it's never going to work. Yeah, You're not remotely following the fucking. Everyone builds those bio. I don't know. Have you ever been on a bio retention cell job? Yeah, yeah, we have. Everyone builds them out of the wrong medium. Right. Yeah, and well, then they never work. The, yeah, we call the supplier and get us a price on this, and then you have the price, but how the fuck do you price it? Because you never installed one before and it's going to take twice as long as it should and that's a show those are shots in the dark maybe someone we, has a formula but i sure shit don't we did a, a few bioretention projects the problem is or we were around them we did the civil contractor did the bioretention cells and all they ever do is go get some fill off site and fill it up <laughs> but now it's like full of clay. So then you drain entire parking lots into this clay and the water just sits there. It sits it's there. supposed to be full of some kind of sandy loam with plastic yeah. pellets in it that's yeah. $400 a yard. But yeah. people don't estimate that. And then they no. fill it up with clay and it's a shit show. Yeah. It's the same with... We did, we did 30,000 square feet of permeable pavers at a water treatment plant once so that they could get their leads points for it. Right, they were trying so hard to get proper lead certification that we had to sneak our cuts from the pavers off the site because technically all waste on site was weighed uh, and went against the yeah. So we were like sneaking these pavers under tarps and shit to get them off site to get rid of them. The People off- are taking them home in their lunch pail. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the highlight of this entire project is once they got their silver lead certification, the very next day, they paved over all the pavers because they don't like plowing them. Wow. Oh. Just boom, they were gone. We went in there the gone. next year to replace a tree or something. Where the fuck are all the pavers? <laughs> like, oh, we wow. paved over that shit. That shit's garbage. It doesn't work. I was like, well, we put it on Crusher Run for a whole road. Like, I don't know why you thought that was going to work. Wow. Like, Holy shit. Oh, whenever, wow. Ever anything's new, people have no fucking clue how it like they won't be bothered to learn about it. And yeah. More. And as I was standing, in, I started to get into it with the guy who I was doing the walkthrough with. He's like, yeah, if you want a permeable paper, and he was like, no, I want it on Crusher on. And I was like, that's what makes it work. Like, I don't have the energy to discuss. Yeah. Whatever. Where the fuck is Paver Pete? Like he's got <laughs> that kind of energy. He brings that or that guy with his chain. Can you get the chain out here? And can you show them why this doesn't fucking work with this pressure on? <laughs> Is there some kind of example we could use here with a chain? I, I uh, going chain everything. No matter what the problem in landscaping now is, get the chain. Get the chain. The chain will prove it. Yeah. I was thinking about doing a test where we get some aluminum edging. And for the record, you can't even buy that fucking edging anywhere that I can find in Canada. <laughs> But you get some aluminum edging, and we're going to run over it with our dump truck and see how it stands up. And then we're going to get some concrete edging and let it harden like a rock, and we're going to drive the dump truck over it, and that's going to be our scientific test of what edging works. Because I think yeah. that's, a, that's a fair, realistic test. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. <sighs> we, uh, <laughs> our last job, we just bought whatever was cheap. Last commercial job. It's what, edging? Plastic edging, yeah. Yeah. And they. Isn't it spec or it didn't matter? Uh, it's a plastic edging or equivalent. So I don't know what. I'm sure it's at a brand name or equivalent. Nobody looks. No. And then, no. Nobody see, by the time they're there, nobody sees it anyway. If they ever did, I'd watch. They're going to come and check now. I like when they have permeable pavers and they're spec with palmeric sand in them. <laughs> I haven't had that yet. No? Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> no one's let me install a permeable job, full permeable commercial job. The first one we ever did was, the first one I ever did was 2008, 2009, and it was at Durham College. And it was El Camp. First of all, no one had ever heard of this before. <laughs> okay, we're going to fill this. It was like, it was a courtyard, like a smoking courtyard. And it was, I don't know, maybe eight or 9,000 square feet of El Campo herringbone, whichever. And it had the the bigger bumpers on it. And yeah. So we filled it all with clear stone and we actually ran an outlet pipe to the ditch which then someone plugged and then the whole system started flooding <laughs> a whole different story because <laughs> some, some mouse went up and it made a nest and then the fucking grass lawn guy fucking <laughs> stuffed it full of bags and then so the it, next a time mouse a mouse ruined this whole permeable system yeah. some engineered system fucked by a mouse a mouse yeah and then when we cleaned out the mouse, it was like uh, six months later, there was like a fucking, the guy was stuffing all the garbage he found up the pipe when he was cutting <laughs> the ditch. Like, we need to like, sign. This pipe is fucking important. It's not random. <laughs> but the biggest bitch back then was getting the specific HPB to get into the joints. Yeah. And then we did not allow enough by far for how long it takes to sweep HPB into El Campo joints in permeable pavers. Cause it, we ended up washing it in and it was fucked. We had to go to like some place crazy up North to get this specific HPB and then buy it by the ton for like 500 bucks a ton. It was fucked. wow. Holy shit. It was a shit show. I, I'm seriously, I'm confident. No money was made there. Hmm. But we should shit. do all kinds of shit for the college now. Huh. One yeah. time, one time, <laughs> we, we had this job, and it was all this underground piping, like a drainage piping, French drains and shit, and we were supposed to do it in, like, end of November, and it rained every day, and then it got, like, minus 10. So we called the guy at the college and said, hey, bro, like, this isn't going to work out, like, this year. And he said, well, I have to have it in this year's budget. So invoice me for it. We'd done like a million dollars worth of work for this guy. He's like, invoice me for it. Do it in the spring when it dries up. And that way it's on this year's budget. We were like, sure, okay. So we invoice the guy. They pay the bill. January 3rd comes around. Guy gets fired. <laughs> oh. Spring comes. <laughs> we get to the summer. What the fuck? And this job's up on our board, right? Because we have this huge board with all the jobs on it. And I turn, I go to the, what the fuck's going on with that job? Because I don't know. What is going on with that job? Like, I don't know. And then we realized because it was all underground and we'd been paid, they thought we did it. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing to see because it was Holy all trenching shit. underground. Wow. It was all drains. Wow. So then they just never called us. That was the most profitable thing I was ever involved in in my whole life. <laughs> wow. That's 100% where, profit. Yeah, that's when we developed this whole how the most profitable work you do is the work you never do. <laughs> you get paid for. And we developed Holy this shit. whole every time we looked at a contract, we were like, how much of this shit are we going to get paid for and never do? Like commercially. Because there's always this laundry list of items that they want you to do that Generally, you're probably never going to do. Sometimes you get burned. We, I, we go ahead. I did the opposite. <laughs> I put in too much topsoil, and like we went past the boundary on this, like the current job that we're on. 
We went past the boundary by fucking 15 feet because I thought it was reinstate to um, the, the, the grubbing line, right? So the fence line where they put the fucking sock yeah. with the wood chips and all this shit. So I'm like, yeah, topsoil, let's go right up to the fence. Let's make it beautiful, all this shit. And then they're like, no, perimeter is three meters off the curb. Like, son of a bitch. I have like fucking 20 loads of topsoil in here. Oh, fuck. And, and I spent the day today picking at that fucking topsoil with the smooth bucket on the shovel, piling it back up to put in the truck, to float it to another site, because I'm petty and I'm not giving them fucking 20 awesome. loads of free topsoil. Um, because I asked them, I said, do you want to leave it? It's going to be like 10 grand. It's already here. Like, we'll just smooth it out, hit it with the power rake. Uh, we'll hydro seed it. It'll be beautiful up to your property line. And I couldn't get an answer out of them for a week. So I'm like, okay, that's enough. We're ripping it all up ourselves. It's going to look like hell and they're going to deal with it. Uh, so. <laughs> so commercial contract, commercial right? contracting. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's a lot of soil. Shane spent all day in the truck, fucking bombing back and forth between there and the next site. Yeah. 20 so, loads of soil is a lot of soil. That's a lot of soil. And that's the good price soil too. So twenty eight grand when in buy, soil. When you buy screen soil, do you buy uh two inch screened or see like whenever you were talking about that, I don't know what that means to me. Like, we have screen topsoil and unscreened topsoil. Well, no, there's okay, so there's like that's so they it, at our soil supplier there's a, a two inch screener and it's commercial screened. So they go through oh. two, two inch sieve. So that just means commercial so topsoil. The soil goes through a two inch sieve, yeah. so it's still screen yeah. soil, yeah. but it's only been through the two inch. So there's still sometimes the stuff is mint, like beautiful, and then the next load is like all fucking rocks that are less than two. Really? Inches big. Yeah. I don't know if the people who screen soil around here know how to measure. It's either screened or it's not. Yeah. But there's never any rocks in it, so it must be a good screen. Oh, it must be it a very small screener. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I, the fucking guy with the power rate kicks up a million rocks from the sub base, that we have to explain to the GC that it was in the sub base. Never mind. Go ahead. Why would you power rake the screen soil? So that you don't have to hand rake the screen soil. We power rake everything. Can't you just spread it out with the bobcat and then hydro seed it? No. Have you ever used a power rake? No. Well, I don't oh. know, probably at some point. I'm I don't think that... I used it right. <laughs> I'm surprised there aren't as many power raking videos as there are spinning bucket videos. Can you make one? <laughs> yeah, I can make one with a little machine tomorrow for you. The make big, a power rake video. The big power rake just And then took tag off. me in it. And then I'm going to say this should be as good. Chad says this is an important tool as a tilt rotator, but it's not getting the fucking love because it doesn't have the marketing machine I mean, of fucking tilt rotators. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you that thing is worth it. I might have gold. used one. Send me a video of yeah. it and I'll see. I got a really old video. I got a Hold six on. sweeper. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going? Is is oh, it did I already tell the story about the sweeper? Yeah. Oh, fuck it. Don't worry about it. I don't know. It's in the yard with all the other junk that we have. <laughs> we were cleaning up the yard today, and I was like, wow, we have amassed a lot of crap in four years. <laughs> like, there's so much shit. Like, there's a fuel tank there that came out of Kelly's truck. Anyone want this, like, $4,000 fuel tank that came with the truck that Kelly didn't want? <laughs> it's, just, like, rotting in the yard. Like, we have so much junk. Holy I, shit. Our guys brought back, not necessarily their fault but they brought back like a bunch of you know half skids of pavers it was they normally return everything they can but you get jammed and you end up with some yeah. stuff so we ended up with like five or six skids in the yard so i said to them this morning i gave them a list i said okay we need to return all the shit out of the yard it's driving me nuts and they were like okay no problem so then i got to the yard and and one of them asked me do you mind if i keep some of this stuff for my house i was like yeah i don't give a shit like, if you want it, take it. If you can build something out of it, I don't, like, whatever. It, I'm happy if you take it and do something with it. It doesn't bother me. But then at the end of the day, I was leaving the yard, and I was like, motherfucker. The whole purpose in my mind of today was to get rid of these fucking four skids, and now they're still here. 
No, I authorized them being here too, but they're still fucking here. <laughs> My whole point was to get rid of these four fucking skids, and they're still here. Now the yard looks awesome though. We hauled in a bunch of regrind and now our bins were sitting in the mud, so now they're not. How much death fluid do you still have? Oh, at least three quarters. I'm thinking about calling uh, the guy we moved snow for because he has a heated shop and saying, I'm going to bring the death fluid cube down to you. Let's keep it in your shop and we can just have a big death fluid party all winter. Because <laughs> e either, either that or I'm going to tell them, come get your clue of death fluid because it's going to freeze soon. Although, are you guys enjoying this weather? Uh. <laughs> full circle. Yeah. Totally uh, great. Full right. circle. Right. So that, on the full circle comment, are we calling that an episode? I think that's a couple episodes. I think we got a couple episodes. Okay, we got a couple yeah. episodes. Right on. I feel like we're building a, uh, a, a fan base. You think so? I well, think that we should all personally send a piece of swag from our own companies to New Leaf Ottawa. I was just about to say, yeah, yeah New Leaf Ottawa, like shout out to you. Every yeah. Saturday he tags us, and that's greatly appreciated. I yeah. will definitely send him out some I Am A Hardscaper merch. I am happy to send him a fuck deck shirt. We just got a new supply. Nice. The problem being I don't really say that anymore. But we have a lot of fucking merch that says that shit now. <laughs> I was like, I got a whole bunch more fuck deck shirts. I'm like, eh, I'm kind of past that. I don't really use that. But I'm like, ah, eh, people like those shirts. So I'll send them a New Leaf Ottawa. When you tag us, when you hear this podcast and you tag us, DM us your fucking address and we will all send you something. Yeah. I, I will personally deliver. I think he's oh. not far from me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ottawa. Really? Yeah. We're up there all the time. Yeah, but would he talk to you? Because you're from Cornwall. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you might be right. <laughs> I don't know. At least you're not from Brockville. Oh, I got to go back to Brockville this week. Great. Chad has Thanks. a low opinion of Brockville. Mm. I hope we have no listeners in Brockville. I don't know any landscapers from Brockville. I know. Oh, I guess he's, sort of, he's a maintenance guy from Brockville. Really nice guy. Does maintenance? Uh, yeah, like uh, he does um, the maintenance for all the smart centers around. Oh, that's a nice. I guess. Gig. Yeah, nice little gig for him. Super nice guy, Steve. Steve and Kim, if you're listening, probably not. Go, Steve and Kim. Hi, Steve and Kim. Fuck yeah! Commercial Go pro, Steve. really nice guys. Commercial but, pro. Steve yeah, yeah, they're pros. Pros. Um, well, it says so. Yeah, sometimes oh, it, you got, and this guy listens to the. So someone called me for a bin this week and he listens to the podcast and that's why he called me for a bin you're getting business from this podcast i got a bin from i got bin <laughs> business from this podcast no way and then i said he said about he would e-transfer us the money and i said well on friday kelly will send you the he goes oh i know i've heard the podcast <laughs> kelly will do the invoicing on saturday and i said oh okay this is fucking great uh so in the calendar, uh, this is, and I, I love this name of this. I said this to him. Said, Fuck. Pro, pros, B4, and it's a B and a 4, hose, concrete. <laughs> That's great. Pros before hose, concrete. <laughs> That's good. So I'm giving this guy a shout out because he, he ordered a bin because he listens to the podcast. See, I thought people listened to the podcast because they knew who you were, not the other way around. What do you mean? So why why maybe people listen to the podcast because they know who you are? Well, either one of us. I, I figure you're the more yeah, fuck Mike. <laughs> no no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. I mean either one of you guys, but yeah. not necessarily me right like hey would that's you that's very self-deprecating chad no no it's uh i'm a realist um that's you're an influencer, realist. I, I'm you're not an influencer. An influencer. you get you get messages yeah, from the from, paper king asking you from, for your rates your unit rates yeah 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 if you could plug me as a as a consultant or if you need your... a consultant on soil spreading you should contact chad he charges yeah. nothing 
No, free. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me asking for free Especially numbers. Especially if you bid work against him, I recommend you text <laughs> him, ask him what his unit rate is to spread yeah. spot. If you're bidding work against Chad, contact me. I'm happy uh, to give out his unit rate for geez. a price. Great. <laughs> so I, car- selling. <laughs> I carried I carried I did the math on what I thought the job would cost me. Yeah. And your unit rate was higher than what my cost was. And I thought maybe I don't know the going rate for doing this right now. And so I was like, well, I know that I'm good with this number, but I'm gonna carry Chad's because obviously he's did way more of this work than I have. So and they emailed me back. Now I don't have a con, but they emailed me back today and said, um, it, when would, if you were the winning bid, when would you be able to start this job? So I told them two weeks from now on November 7th, and then they never emailed me back. I think that might not be a great sign, but you never know. If we get this job that Chad consulted on, I will buy Chad lunch at the meetup we're not having at LO Congress. Uh, great. I can't wait. We should for my... get hotel rooms at LO Congress so we can sit in the bar with all the reps and make them buy us drinks. Would they yeah. do that? Would they... What? Not after would they, they hear that? the podcast. Would they, would, they, <laughs> would they buy us drinks? Oh, yeah. I, I've never been at LO Congress besides just the, the showroom floor. Oh, you've never gone to like I've never after- like stayed. It was There's like, like an after my, party and stuff. Right? Yeah, it was like part of my fucking job to go to that. Oh, show. that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I did that shit all the time. Yeah. There's like a they used to there's a bar down there and people used to meet in it, and then the reps would all use their expense accounts. Hmm. I there was like some party a couple of years ago. And I don't know, the the big room in the conference center. A big room. So, yeah, big room. I remember it was dark. The yeah. the cat rep, she bought me a couple of beers. Um, Do you own any cat equipment? No, none. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking about it though. I was thinking yeah, about how it. many beers? How many beers? <laughs> I, <laughs> how many beers would it have taken for you to get <laughs> some cat equipment? Well, I think I got two beers, but no, I don't know. Would you uh, buy a piece of cat equipment because of the beers, or well, no, just in general? Um. I'm not opposed to it. I don't like how cat considers everything not cat to be off brand equipment. Um I if That's the service true. was great, absolutely. Uh I don't love the twenty percent higher that they are for cost of machinery and stuff, but so who interesting knows? interestingly Having priced and knowing a bunch of people that price stuff out, they actually had the lowest cost for some of the machines. Really? Yes. I could be completely it's wrong. My, right? well, like no, I don't think you are wrong. I think it's changed. Yeah. I don't think you were wrong. I think it's changed, though. Why? What changed? Well, no, I just think this pricing just changed and they're more competitive now. Really? Yeah. I'd love to hear that, right? Like, I'm not opposed to trying a cat. Actually, one of my clients had a cat and we ran that for. Uh, just to move pallets around and stuff. It was a really nice machine. I found it whiny. Like to sit in it all day, you'd have to wear earmuffs or whatever. But it was a nice enough machine. I, the guy we moved snow for, he has a bunch of them that are painted black from the factory. Yeah, one of the guys in Washington has sick. one of those too. Yeah, he bought awesome. it at Congress, actually. They're awesome. They had one. Yeah, pretty they're cool. Sick. It's a yeah. super off top. <laughs> It's really off topic. Is it? There's I don't no know. Maybe topic. there wasn't There's a no topic. topic. There's no topic. There was no topic. Yeah. What's the episode what? called? There was no topic. There was no topic? There was no topic. That's the title right there. Perfect. There was zero topics. No <laughs> there topic was no topic. Had. Fuck the topics. Yeah. Topic. I, I don't even remember what we started off talking about. Oh, H and A. I thought this H-A. episode was going to be called. Well, maybe not this because this. Why are they called the same thing? And they're, they're always the out? same. Yeah. Yeah, I would say our H and A review. H and A roundup. H and A roundup show. What we did at H and A. What we did. What we didn't do at H and A when we didn't go. <laughs> do you uh, think that that event is much different than LO Congress? 
other than the networking no right but the networking see... is what you make of it you can exactly. do, i yeah i've done networking at, at lo congress yeah like i I've, I've met lots of people that i knew there and like i've done that so i but i think the networking is there is very is definitely broader what, like everybody right north america yeah. yeah it's a bit broader and they don't have like the big outdoor thing at congress obviously because it's That's minus yeah. fucking 40. yeah <laughs> but they have the they don't have the big outdoor thing so yeah i really though what are you networking at congress that you couldn't network right on instagram True. True. Yeah. I just Unless like you're to, coming like, to the meetup. The Not Our Finest Hour podcast meetup that we're going to organize. Well, Mike's not going to because he doesn't want to have a fucking schedule. He's going to hope <laughs> that people randomly gather in an area at some point together. We should organize a Not Our Finest podcast flash mob. Wow. That's what we should you know, Old school flash mob. Dance moves. Wow. Wow. I don't even know how to organize that shit. I should look it up. I think. We could do a flash mob at uh well pick us get a sponsor. We'll we'll do a not our finest right. hour podcast flash mob at your fucking booth right here, right now. Just the start only company over this, the this only flag. company I emailed saying, Hey, do you want to sponsor this podcast? They did not even respond. <laughs> they didn't even acknowledge the email. Like they, they were like, We want we don't want to acknowledge this email because that might mean or be construed that we had something to do with this podcast. <laughs> might have to. I don't know. I don't know why it's not appealing to sponsor. Maybe it's the only hundred people listen to it. <laughs> that could be one of the problems. <laughs> Potentially, or I don't that. know. Well, oh, it's growing. It's, it's growing. growing. It, it's got to be growing. Is it growing? Is it? Uh, it's yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> have you even looked? Are you just? I, I haven't looked. I, okay. I before I started this last project, I did like a batch of editing. I scheduled them. I need to look at it in like three weeks. So, when you're done the last project, <clears throat> yeah. Are you gonna make a bunch of videos about the mud mixer? Tons. Yeah, I'm going for lots of hate and to get engagement. How much? How much meaningful conversations did you spark by asking people to start a meaningful conversation on Zero. your last reel? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Well, no, a few people responded, then I responded again. So I guess we did actually, I'd say two or three meaningful comments. That video, for the amount of views it has, has a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. But that didn't drive any more views. I need it. So I should have tagged Sam more. <laughs> when you make your first mud mixer video, we need to tag Sam more 65. Sounds good. Because that guy drives views. I don't think I think that video only has like six thousand views, but like eighty five comments. That's a bad ratio. All right, bedtime. Sounds good. This Great. is the fucking end of the podcast. <laughs> Later. Later. Bye.